Hello everyone, WD8BWW here. Today we're going to show the installation and demonstration of the new BHI 1901 DSP module in our FT-857D radio. And the module is located right, you can see it installed here, right there. The module is actually wrapped in heat shrink tubing. I do this on all of my installs for customers because basically the radios, either you're talking about an 897, 857, or the 817, these radios are typically used in a mobile environment and they're subject to a lot of vibration and moving around, especially like on some of the, uh, uh, the backpacking folks that uh, actually go out in the field and, and do the hiking, etc. So I put these in a, a heat shrink cocoon, if you want to call it that, uh, to make sure that if the, if the board does come somewhat dislodged, you can see that all of the, uh, the, the leads and so forth that are on the module have no ability whatsoever to be shorted out against either the components on the back side or the top of the radio, the top side of the radio, the, the inside metal cover. So to me, this is important so that in the future, there's no issues with the uh, module and, and reliability, etc. even with uh, the harsh environment of mobile and, and portable radio operation. The module is located here and held down with the uh, double-sided tape makes for a very, very sturdy installation and a very simple installation. Okay, the next step in the installation of the BHI module is how it actually connects to the radio electrically. This is the input-output audio cable that connects to the PC board. And I've taken a couple of little shots here to throw in that shows a little bit more detail you really need to refer to the instruction set in order to actually do this. I just wanted to put this in for some reference information and just to give you a little bit of an idea on, on how the, uh, uh, the module itself is connected. The input and output to the BHI module, either the 1901 or the uh, current 1061 module, is via this shielded twisted pair coax. Uh, the red wire representing the input to the uh, DSP module and the blue wire being the output. If you notice in the instructions that it actually replaces a capacitor that couples from one stage of the audio circuit to the next. And that's true on the 857, 897, 817 slash 818. Okay, here's another uh, item that I wanted to mention. That is that on all of my installs, and also, recommendation for the do-it-yourselfers. In addition to the soldering of the shield, which actually stabilizes the cable pretty well, I put down some 5-minute epoxy right on the end of the cable in order to stabilize that whole area right here and make sh absolutely certain that no mechanical force is ever applied to the pads that that red and blue wire attached to. It's extremely important to understand that these, uh, these PC boards are all pretty much surface mount components. And they're designed for a one-time soldering in a refill oven that actually is very, very gentle uh, with regard to any mechanical stress. So if you're doing this install or any type of repair on a surface mount, it's very, very important to use a temperature-controlled iron and use the touch-and-go method as mentioned in the... Uh, in the instructions. I've repaired a lot of radios where people have lifted pads. With this install along with the other 800 series radios, the blue wire attaches to an output pad which is actually connected to an internal trace in the PC board. If you do accidentally lift that pad, then what you'll have to do is run a jumper wire from about here which is where there's an audio amplifier. It's actually located on the back side of the board to where you would normally have made the connection. So it requires a jumper wire to run pretty much this entire length. But again, I run that jumper wire underneath the PC board if it happens. And I've done this for, for customers who've accidentally lifted that pad. 
I run the jumper wire on the back side of the board so that the RF that's on the top side of the board here doesn't get into that circuit. Okay, next let's talk about the switch installation. The switch installation is actually on the 857. Very, very convenient and pretty easy to install. It's right here in the upper right-hand corner of the radio. On the 857, there are actually vent holes here across the front of the radio. And we elongate one and open it up and actually open up the second one for the LED. And then what that does is it uh, very, very convenient and uh, makes the actual installation easy. We snap the lid in place here. Oh, accidentally turned the DSP on with uh, hitting the button there. So when the uh, DSP is off, the LED is red. When the DSP is engaged, it's, uh, it's green. So uh, what I want to do here is I'm going to put a, a screw in here and stabilize the, the cover. And we'll get on with some demonstrations. Here we are on 40 meters, single sideband, DSP is disengaged, there's the DSP engaged, you can hear that the background noise dropped down considerably. Without DSP, with DSP. And let's go down and see if we can find some CW. DSP off. There okay, here's DSP is off. DSP is on. Okay, let's go look at uh, 80 meters here. Let's do some uh, demo here on 80 meters. I tilted the display so you can see the switch position and the display at the same time. DSP is off. DSP is on. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, you can contact me. Uh, I'm good in QRZ, or you can check me out on my Facebook page, WDABWW. And uh, again, thanks for watching, and 73.